Hey guys, how's it going? Today I'm going to show you how I made this sign for our property. While it's not an actual national park, that's what we call it and we absolutely love it. We also do have the plans for this available on our website, so definitely check that out. There's a link down in the description for those if you want to make this yourself. So anyways, without further ado, let's get into it. Starting on our new project here, applying some Aura Mask 813 down to it. I'm going to be making a national park sign for our property. We do have the designs available on our website, so definitely check those out there. We kind of joke and call it that, but this will definitely be a really nice piece and nice sign to have there. I'm using one and a half inch thick HDU foam and just adding all of the tools that I'm going to be using to the tool holder and getting that sucked down to the Stepcraft Q408 vacuum table. I'm starting off here with the RC-1102 90 degree V insert bit. I'm going to carve out all of the text first. We're just going through the ore mask and this is leaving a really nice perfectly clean cut through that and through the HDU foam as well. This is my first time really using HDU for a large project like this and it carved really nicely. If you love this type of content, be sure to subscribe to our channel. And go ahead and hit that bell so that you'll be notified on all of the new videos when they're released. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Tools Today. So we'll just finish up getting all of that text carved in. And then we're going to go through around the outside of it, making a large chamfer on there. This bit is plunging in here at over a half inch in a single pass and doing a really nice job leaving that deep chamfer. It's really cool to see this bit going through that material and uh, creating all those stringy shavings. It's definitely a different material than wood, but this chamfer is definitely going to add quite a bit to this piece, and I really like the way that it ended up looking. So we get that vacuumed off, and then now that that part is done, I'm going to go ahead and paint the text. I'm using General Finish's Snow White Milk Paint. Uh, this is kind of my go-to for signs like this, and we'll put an outdoor finish over the top of it after it's all dry. So I just showed a little bit of that painting, and I uh, got everything else painted as well. So now we'll switch out for the 46202-K quarter-inch down cut bit. For the rest of the details, we're going to be doing a flat bottom V-carve. So this is essentially going to go through and remove all of the majority of the waste. So it's taking out all of the larger areas, and then we'll come back with the V-bit here after all that's done to pick up all of those fine details. It's just going through and doing its final pass here on this portion of the sign. And then we can get that all vacuumed off. Uh, normally you would have the vacuum running or the dust collection running here, but for video purposes we leave uh, the dust collection off. So we clean it off in between each sign. That way we can see all of the detail that it's picking up. So we switched out for the RC-1148 60 degree V insert bit. And this is going to go through and do all of the fine details. You can see it along that edge. Basically it's just getting it down to its final size. And then up here on the tree, it's picking up all the fine details there and then on the forest line as well. One of the most satisfying parts of this project was definitely seeing it carving out the deer from the rough shape that was left from the clearance bit. It's really cool to see basically the, the whole deer family come to life uh, and pick up all those fine details that were in the design. So I really enjoyed seeing that aspect of it and this bit did a great job with all of that. I'm really happy with the way that the V-carve turned out. With flat bottom V-carves, it's often that you can get uh, height differences, but this machine handled it perfectly and I got a really nice accurate flat bottom V-carve without any cleanup needed. So we can switch out for the 46315-K quarter inch upcut bit and this will just cut out the profile. This bit is the bit that I had on hand. It doesn't have quite the cutting height of the material, but we'll show you how to work with thicker stock here in just a little bit. So we removed all of the material down to the one inch cut height of the bit, got that all vacuumed off and then I'll get it pulled off of the table. This sign's really starting to come together and I really like the way that it looks. So we'll get it moved over to the workbench and I'll do a little bit of painting. I taped off the areas that don't need it. Then I did several coats of paint. I just showed one here, but I did several to fill out the design. I want to use keyhole slots to hang this, so I'm using the 45650 keyhole bit to do that. Basically, I got it flipped over and uh, added the tool to the auto tool changer, picked that up, and then now I'm going to do a test keyhole slot just to make sure that I have all of these settings correct. So basically, it's going to go down and move over and then come back and up and out of the exact same hole that it went in. You can see that we have a nice keyhole slot here. These screws will work well. So we're going to do it on the actual piece. We went through and I added two of those. This will definitely help with the curvature of the tree, allowing me to get it nice and secure on the tree. So we did both of those slots. Really happy with that. And now we'll get that pulled off of the CNC for the last time. So then we're going to get the tape removed around the outside. And now we're just going to move over to the bandsaw here to cut out the remaining area. So like I said, if you had a larger cut height bit, you could certainly do that. This is a great way to work with thicker materials on smaller CNC machines. Uh, so it's a great option for somebody 
uh, that wants to work with those thick materials. You can also use something like a jigsaw as that will also cut this material really well as you can see here. It does a great job with that if you don't have a full bandsaw. So uh, like I said, it's a really nice way to work with thicker material. So then we'll get switched out for the flush trim bit. This is the 47092 quarter inch diameter flush trim and that will basically have the bearing right along where we cut and then it will trim everything perfectly flush to that. This will get into all those same areas that I was able to get into with that quarter inch bit. So it'll leave everything exactly the way that we want it. So we just go around the entire workpiece and get that all flush trimmed. The HDU is fairly dusty. Unfortunately, I don't have the uh, dust collection on the fence since we're videoing this. It wouldn't be very fun to watch a fence the entire video. So we got that all done. And now I'm gonna switch out for the 49400 45 degree chamfer bit. And we're just gonna go along the outside. I'm gonna do this in two passes to match the chamfer that we have on the front edge, make it look a little bit more like an arrowhead, and I really like the way that it looks. So I'm going through here on two passes with this particular material since it's a softer HDU foam. I probably could have done this in a single pass, but I just wanted to be safe and take two passes. It's a lot for the bit to take out in a single pass. So we got that done. The profile matches really well, and I'm just going to kind of ease over those edges just a little bit to make the painting process a little bit easier. Now that I've got everything taped up on the front side, we can paint the back side and the sides as well. Again, I did several coats here. This is just the first one. And now we can get the masking removed. My kids and wife stopped by with some lunch, and uh, Katie wanted to see the sign. Huh? And then there was our ass? Yeah, which one do you think's you? That's yeah. Next to mom. And You're right. Yeah, I'm next to mama. You are right. And mama, yeah. mama, you know those zero us? <laughs> it's the us family dear. I definitely love having her come see the shop. So I'm using a hook weeding tool here to help remove all of the masking. It definitely helps to lift that up and pull it off a lot easier. It's really satisfying to see the masking coming off and it definitely did a nice job keeping the paint out of where I didn't want it. So again, I'm gonna use some General Finishes Snow White Milk Paint. I started off trying to do this with a towel. I think I had too much paint on there. Uh, so I switched to a foam brush and I tried to do like a rippling effect here. Uh, I'm gonna layer this with blue on top of it. Uh, the brown would have made it kind of a darker blue, so this will kind of lighten things up. And then I'll use some General Finishes Klein Blue Milk Paint, and you can see me wiping it off there. And again, I'm going to try to do a ripple effect here to make it look a little bit more like water, and it actually worked out pretty well. I was kind of impressed with how well it worked, and I really think that it turned out nicely. So we have that all done. Now I got a little jig set up here to spray the finish on. I'm using Helmsman Spar Urethane. We do sell that on our website. It's a great outdoor finish and worked really well for this project. Again, I did several coats here, but I just showed the one. So we can move out to the property now and get the sign all installed on this tree. This tree faces our driveway, so I'll see it every time coming home. So that's gonna do it for this sign. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it, but stay tuned and we'll do some walking around the woods and let my daughter finish it out. Yeah, and then we have the deer family, and then what's that? Mm-hmm, and then what is this? Tree and daddy, Katie, he like mama. Good job, boo. We call this the National Park. Let me show you why. Yeah, that would be a good web whacker. Keep the webs out of our face. Yeah, big jump. Whoa. Nice jump. One, two, three. One, two, three. Well, this is too big of a tree, huh? Yeah. And when I sign him up top, I don't know how to get down. Yeah. Maybe we could make it part of a tree house. With toys and ladder. Yeah. And books. Hmm? Yeah. 
Yeah. I was asleep up there. You were asleep in a treehouse? Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. If you love this type of content, be sure to subscribe right over here. And for more great videos, click right over here.